Hi, my name is John LeDrew with Melco International. Here with uh, Digital Monday, um, we're showing you how to uh, print on shoes. People always ask me, John, how do you use the F2100 to print pizza shoes? Well, not pizza shoes necessarily, but print on shoes. It just so happens we have our, here, our buddy here, Josh Welch, with Melco International. He's our uh, applications engineer. What are you doing? Oh, just conveniently printing pizza shoes. How about that? So today, Digital Monday, we're going to show you how to print pizza shoes. So uh, we have the F2100 obviously needed, direct to garment is needed to do this. Um, people pr print on shoes all the time. We're going to kind of simplify it, break it down and show you how it's done. Um, Josh is going to remove this shoe yep. and I'm going to show you how to set it up in Garment Creator and to be kind of quick with time, he's going to show you how to uh, kind of lace it up or uh, tape it off and prep it and get it ready for the, uh, get it ready for the press. So yep. why don't we switch Absolutely. sides buddy? All right, so um, first thing is you will have a shoe platen, which we're going to use here shortly, but I want to show you how to set this up first to begin with. Standard 14 by 16 platen. This is a tuck lock platen, which we really like. If you don't use tuck lock, certainly not a problem to use the, uh, the default platen from Epson, uh, but we're going to use this tuck lock. Yeah, Josh, if you don't yeah. mind doing that. I'm going to bring over my computer and we're going to I'm going to kind of show you some of the artwork. I'm going to show you how to set it up. I'm going to show you how to line it up. Because as you know, in Garment Creator, there's pretty, um, Nate, oh, and by the way, say hi to Nate, everybody. He's in the background running the cameras. Doing I don't know a what stellar we, job. I don't know what we would do without this guy. He is our Digital Monday extraordinaire. Well, really, our Facebook Live extraordinaire, yeah. would you say, Nate? No, he's shaking his head <laughs> now. But it's a, it's a yes. Okay, so in layout settings, um, uh, as you know, you guys, you can do, oh, it's not really showing us. Oh yeah, different platen adjustments. So we have a large platen, small platen, extra small, medium, um, grooved platen, sleeve platen. So there's a few default platen settings from Epson, but there's certainly no shoe platen uh, setting. So I'm gonna show you how to use the shoe platen um, to, to set it up on your, uh, in your 14 by 16 grid and make sure you're gonna hit your spot with your shoes. People ask me that all the time. Hey, I have this unique platen. How do I make it work? Well, you can make your own platen grids in Garment Creator. Um, not something I have done, but I know I've, I've heard a lot of good things about that. It certainly can be done, but I'm going to show you how to do it real quickly. Uh, kind of the, I don't know, the rough and tumble kind of. Right. Josh is taping up some shoes. This is only going to take me a minute. Here's what we're going to end up with. Here's going to be our results. This will be our result. And you can see I have my platen outlined. Um, I have my pizza layout in there. I'm gonna show you how that's done right now. So, first thing we need a test shirt. So I'm just gonna quickly load a test shirt here. This is a place, this is kind of basically showing where our settings are, where our, where our print is gonna land. So I'm just gonna tuck that in. Tuck lock platens, really good stuff. The nice thing we like about this shoe business is it gives you that extra opportunity to do something a little bit unique, right? Yeah. Josh actually has done this quite a bit with some customers. Yep. So when he, since he's been in town, we're excited to do this with him. Absolutely. Uh, hand me that marker, buddy. All right. So I have a shirt on here. This is just where we're going to basically we're going to print on to test where our location is. I'm going to find the, the pins in every platen for an Epson are the same. So the, pl the pins on this platen are the same pins as what you'll find on any other Epson platen, and that means where it's going to locate. So I'm finding my two pin holes here on this shirt on this platen. From there, would you mind handing me a rag, please, buddy? Or that white shirt back there? Yeah, yeah that's perfect. I just want to clean this off a little bit because there's a lot of overspray. So one thing is uh, we want to have a lot of cleaning stuff around, right? right? Yeah, absolutely. Because you get it on your hands and you get it on the shoe. So now I'm going to find basically where this sits over top of my holes. And you can just eyeball it. Make sure it's pretty square on either side. You can see once you've got it pretty much set. It's really not that complicated and it's not super scientific, no, right? not at all. You've done more, way more science than this, haven't you, Josh? Yes, you know what? Would you say you're a scientist? Um, at yeah, certain things. Medium amounts. Medium amounts. <laughs> what do you know about protons and neutrons? Not a lot. <laughs> anyway. All right. So um, I'm just outlining my platen. A real rough outline is all that's really needed. Okay? Perfect. So now I have it set. I know where my, my, my 
shoe platen is going to be when I replace it and I put it on this, um, put it on the Epson, yep. right? If you don't have this, I would suggest getting it. This is useful for a number of different things beyond uh, doing just shoes. But if you're doing left chest, if you're doing all sorts of uh, weird placements on garments, this is called the 14 by 16 uh, grid. This is something I created. We sell it, sell it on Shop Melco. Um, it's the same grid that you will find in Shop Melco um, as um, uh, or on Garment Creator. Um, it's just printed on a transparency, and you can lay it directly over top of a platen, and you can help find your 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 print areas, your yeah. print spots, really easy. So super useful tool if yeah. you don't have it. Again, you can buy it on Shop Melco. Especially on weird garments like shoes and stuff like that. Where shoes, it's hard to line up left, left chest, chest even. Chest. Yeah, all the time. Everybody loves finding a left chest spot. Pain in the butt, right? Always fun. Okay, so go into Garment Creator. Nate's switching the camera here. Um, well, let's show you what we have. So, right here, this is this is the this is what we've been running. We've been running these. these this is our pizza logo, um, our pizza artwork, and this is where it's sitting on the garment right now. Um, so, a couple ways we can do this. I just want to show you basically what we're going to try to recreate. Um, going back to, going off the computer and back to the camera. Um, we have, I created my artwork at, um, uh, it is, let me just see here, uh, 12 by 6. So I measured my shoe, um, I measured my platen, um, I gave a little bit of overage just so I can have enough space to make sure that I'm covering all my shoe area. Um, and I came up with the dimension of printing on as up to a size 11, right. 10 by 10, uh, 12 by 6. So using that we'll take our ruler here um, I'm gonna measure about 12 I'm gonna show like okay where's 12 inches land in here how far up or down do I want to bring it um, six inches wide how far over am I gonna bring this right so I'm just kind of rough estimating where I think that 12 by 6 rectangle is gonna fall in on my shoe platen okay pretty straightforward and with this with this grid I can then I can now see all right, so if I'm at 12 inches, I want to be up maybe an inch and a half from the bottom. That'll give me about two inches, two and a half inches, two and a quarter inches from the top. I'm going to come in about a half an inch, and that should put things in a, in a pretty general space. So right now I'm going to show you how I do that. So here's my 12 by 6 inch. Oh, yeah, back into this computer, please, Nate. I'm sure you're on it because you're a pro. It's a wizard. Uh, we're just going to cancel. We're going to replace this because I already have it. All right. So, and while this is, while I'm done with this, we're going to print it. While it's printing, Josh is going to show you how to kind of set set up the shoe and prep it uh, for print. So, here it is, 12 inches wide by six inches tall. Obviously, we're printing the other direction here. So, I'm going to rotate it, and I want it about a half inch in and about a, a quarter inch up is what I've kind of figured out with my measurements on my screen here on my uh, on my platen. Um, and then I need to duplicate this. So I'm going to do another one just on the other side. And I think we want to be over more like uh, half an inch. And you can see that these are half inch marks here. So right on kind of the half inch mark. And here we're going to uh, what, add a multi-image, right? Yep. And we're going to duplicate it. Um, and then here it is. So I'm going to bring it the same spot on the other side. About a half inch over, two and a half inches down. Right? That's about what we had, buddy, right? Yep, that's perfect. Okay. That should do it, but I'm going to flip the inverse. Josh brought this up recently. We're just going to inverse it so it's kind of the op opposing image on either shoe. Right. If somebody's getting that close looking at your pizza shoes, right. then I don't think it, yeah. Kick them. It doesn't matter <laughs> too much on the on pizza. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter, but regardless. So yeah. inversing it is the right move, right? Correct. Okay. So from here, that's basically our setup. I know that I'm pretty much accurate because I have my grid. I drew my platen on my shirt. I'm going to print it now and see if that will fall in the same area where my shoe will be set. on the uh, hand me a shoe. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm just going to show you how we load this shoe just so you see, but real quick. It's a question from me, and you'll have to repeat because I'm not my. Yes. Uh, if you're, uh, you can't flip it if it has wording, right? So do you do two sides, two different? That, that's a great question. So yeah. in that case, you probably wouldn't inverse it, right? Unless right. you did two different art pieces. So yeah. that's absolutely right. Yep. 
Um, and if the art dictated that it be inversed, then you would. But if it's stars and planets, right. not a big deal. Or pizza, yeah. probably not a big deal. Right? Just stick with the pizza. Just stick with the pizza, man. Everybody loves pizza. Everybody loves pizza. That's Everybody. why we're doing pizza yeah, shoes. Exactly. It was your idea. No. Full of good ideas, this guy. Okay. Hungry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to print this. Um, show you in Garment Creator really quickly uh, what settings we use. I'm printing out a light color t-shirt. Um, you can just kind of, we don't really have to do anything special with this. We're just printing directly on canvas. So we're just going to do light color t-shirt, level three. Let no sense in bumping yeah. anything up. Just we're just getting rip. a rough estimate of the placement. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Right. We could have even, yep. right, good point. Because we're doing the, just the placement, we could yep. have even reduced costs a little bit more. So while this is printing, Josh is going to show you the ins and outs of how to tape a shoe, prep it, get it ready, all the good Precisely. Stuff. All right, so on these guys, what we want to do is we want to tape off any of the area that we're not going to be printing. So the bottom part of the sole of the shoe, we're going to want to tape that off. I like to tape off the back um, seam here too so that it doesn't overspray and we get nice clean lines on the back. So we're just going to take some blue painter's tape and we're going to tape off the bottom. Now we don't have to worry about the eyelets of the shoe because when we print this, it, it can print over the eyelets and even after you cure these, you can still wipe the ink right off of the eyelets. So mm -hmm. what we're going to do is we're just going to tape off the bottom, make sure my lines are straight. So I'm just going right up to where that rubber part meets the canvas, taping that off. Josh and I were talking before, uh, he's pretty much, he's a big gearhead, right? So he works with motorcycles <laughs> and cars and stuff. I'm like, I was like, your taping job, man. It's pretty, yeah. pretty, you know, it's pretty good. He's like, yeah, but I don't do painting, right? You don't, yeah, you don't paint. No. You like it rough and Yeah, all well, my rusty. stuff's pretty ratty, so yeah, I don't yeah. have to worry about paint. Rat rod. And if I do, I got a good friend that paints, so I just send it his way. Yeah, yeah. You don't right? have to do a lot of taping off. Exactly. It's good. Yeah, so still just lining this right up. Now, we don't have to go all the way to the end here, but I am going to do a line right here at the tip of the shoe, just in case we get any overspray up there, which we will have some overspray on here. I mean, there's no way... No way around it. That's why we're taping it off. Yeah. So. And you mentioned the eyelets. You don't need to do anything with yep, that. Yep. Nope. The eyelets will be fine. We'll take care of that after we um, That's good. print and cure the shoe. So. Kind of difficult to do showing this. Yeah. Showing it in, doing it, and holding it. Now, there's a good trick that we figured out. John actually had the idea of doing it earlier. So, on this side of the shoe, we don't have the, you know, the logo on the side but if you do have the logo on the side and you want to keep it nice and clear mm. what we're going to do here is on a roll and print and cut we print it off a 1.95 sticker and we cut it out if i can get it off of here yeah we tried one we tried two inches yeah 1.9 sizes i mean it's probably a two inch diameter but it works perfect with and it'll fit right over that yeah 1.95 so if you're doing Converse, that's the, that's the way size. to do it, yeah. yeah. So that's good. So you taped off what you don't want. You remove yep. the laces. Remove the laces, yes. That type of stuff, simple. Okay. So what we're left with here, kind of like I suspected. Well, exactly what I suspected. <laughs> this is... What's that planned? This is our pizza logos where our shoes are going to go. This is our shoe platen. If you put it right over top where it was, it kind of falls right in there perfectly. So we have a little bit of overspray, not much. Um, our shoe is going to be plenty covered in this scenario. Um, that's how you do a little weird things like this. But again, you can create you can create this grid in Garmin Creator. Um, we'll have to do another show on that in the future. Yeah, so absolutely. We're putting our shoe platen on now. Yes. And so this platen we already have so, taped up. But what we were using on that, it's just some double-sided carpet tape. So when we put the shoe on there, the canvas, we needed to stick to something and hold in place, right? Because we're not using a platen to tuck it in. So we just put the double-sided tape on here, and it'll hold our shoe right in place. So I'm just going to add a little bit more right here. That should be good, well, actually. Off a chunk, yeah. I'll do some, too. There's a chunk for you. You know, it, it, it probably doesn't hurt to add this stuff every once in a while. As you can see, it kind of gets a little bit slimy. Yeah. Um, speaking of that, Josh, we carry uh, we we have some hand cleaning stuff close yeah. by, don't we? We do. Yeah, this is definitely going to be messy. So. Yeah, and you want this double-sided tape? To, uh, double. 
double double sided, <laughs> double sided tape to be sticky so you might have to redo it a couple times not a big deal just remove it when you're done again you're putting shoes down so if it's not super um, flat or whatever it's not going to be the end of the world hey will you hand me some hand cleaning stuff yeah, absolutely by the way will. this is good practice so we don't want to uh um we're making germs not spreading here that's too, true so yeah we're, we're anti-coronavirus in this yeah. building uh but yeah so keep your hands clean that, you know, just good production practice so you don't get stuff on your gear. Garment. So this is your side. No, this is my side. All right, so the way this works is we're taking our shoe, we're loading it on, we're bringing it forward. Right? This is so funny. <laughs> it's just I funny. saw Nate laughing and oh, it yeah. just got me going. Okay. Well, as long as we're having a good time. That's that's always a really good time. Matters, yeah. Pizza shoes. Right? Pizza shoes. How can you be sad at a pizza party? Uh, so, just want to make sure that my location is pretty good, right? It's pretty flat. I've got as much of it covered as I can. A couple things you'll notice. I'll I'll show you here in a second. Um, there's going to be some areas where um, the shoe isn't perfectly flat, um, and there's going to be a little bit, it, maybe a little bit of um, uh, of Clarity. Oh, I forgot clarity. to tape the back. Yeah, yeah, we're just gonna do that real quick. Sorry, I talked so, about it. We're gonna just do a, a quick line back here. Try to reduce this overspray. Um, pretty simple. Here you go. Here's a big piece of tape. Oh, thank you. Cut that in a couple pieces. Uh, but we want to make it so anywhere you don't want it to print won't. The other thing is there's so the shoe has a little bit of angles to it in certain areas. Right, this is what I want to get at. So the back by your heel here, it's not perfectly flat. Over by the front of the shoe, it's not perfectly flat. But if you look at the print, it's really not that big of a deal, right? No. So it's it's kind of minimal. So I wouldn't sweat it too much. Um, you're gonna do the best you can to lay it flat. Um, Chuck Taylors really are the shoes to use. Yeah. Uh, you can use an off-brand um, light colors, dark colors if you wanted to pre-treat. Yeah. All that's doable. Um, from here, I don't really think we have to do much more. One thing I want to mention is platen height. So you'll always, when you're doing something different or unique outside of a t-shirt, um, you'll want to adjust your platen height. Typically the way I do it is I drop it down pretty low. Then I will raise it up a notch or two until it throws the platen height sensor. Yep. As soon as it throws that platen height sensor, just drop it down one notch or one half notch, um, and and you should be right in the range where you're going to get good quality results. Exactly. So did you do did you pre-treat shoes before when you? I did. The first time I did this, um, the only thing that we could find were black shoes. Um, so we just I put some pre-treat in a spray bottle, kind of sprayed it on there, and then I used yeah. the heat gun, cured it out, threw it on there, and they printed out. Wonderful. Nice. So it's more work. I mean, it's definitely easier to do it on the white because we don't have the pre-treated. True. Obviously. And if you want to make it color, you might yep. as well, right? Hey, will you hand me that spray pre-treat over there? Sure. Well, since we're talking about okay, perfect. So we have the platen height sensor has been thrown. Um, I'm just going to take it down two notches just to be sure. With uh, two half clicks, basically on the 2100. Um, so we're in good range there. Our shoes look flat. We know our location is pretty good. Josh was talking about spraying, so yep. we're going to talk about this pre-treat spray in a second. Um, I'm just going to hit, well, now we're circulating. That's nice. Epson, keep yourself nice, healthy, and happy. Yep. Oh, one thing to mention, tuck your late, tuck your tongues in, because again, there's going to be a little bit of overspray, so we right. want to make sure we're not getting parts of the shoe that shouldn't be getting um, sprayed. So we're going to print this. It's going to spool. I feel pretty confident about it. Yeah, How about you? Yeah, feel good. Yeah. Yep. We're in the white, right? What level? Just yep, well, yep. white, level three. So light colored garment, level three. Easy, nothing to it. Pretty simple. Um, We'll let this run, and while that's printing, I'm going to show you about this uh, pre-treat solution in a can. Um, it's an aerosol spray, and it works really, really good. Um, I did a bunch of tote bags yesterday, or not yesterday, but last week. Um, I did a bunch of um, uh, left chests with this, um, and this would be perfect for shoes too. So yeah, we yeah. sell this on Shop Melco. Um, Josh had mentioned um, putting pre-treat solution in a spray bottle and spraying it. We certainly have done that before. This is just a mixture of pre-treat solution and water. This is um, definitely the easier route though. Yeah, so, um, and we're also using now this universal pre-treat solution. Again, you can buy this on Shop Melco. It's actually um, gonna be on sale here soon. So um, this universal pre-treat solution is good stuff. Uh, we're gonna start selling this with every uh, 2100 because you can do, um, you can do 
this is a pre-treat for all. So you can do polyesters, cotton, blends, hoodies. I mean, everything with and this stuff. polyester is a big deal. Yeah, and poly is yeah. a big deal now. So this stuff that comes in a can works really, really well. Um, it sprays really, really easy. It's not too terribly expensive, and it's perfect for that smaller or unique or weird type stuff. So check this out on Shop Melco. Um, good stuff. So, so this should be a quick print, you know, as you know, yeah. color on the F2100 prints yeah. really fast. And being um, on white, well, I mean, we're not using that much ink either, so our ink cost on here yeah, is nothing. really minimal. Yeah. So you see, Josh had a lot of shops he did, ran a lot of business, yep. has a lot of customers. You see a lot of value in this? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You look at, you figure a pair of Chuck Taylors at the outlet, outlet store are 40, 50 bucks. Yeah. And the print cost on here, I mean, we're probably under a buck with this. Oh, yeah. I mean, easily. Maybe so 20 cents. So a 20 cents. custom pair of Chuck Taylors, you know. Um, probably 150 bucks, 130 bucks out the door. So, yeah. I mean, the setup time, I mean, you got a little bit of setup, but you're getting a premium for your True, garments, and you so. should charge for artwork right, probably. Right, exactly. So, hey, you want something custom or you have an idea, and they, um, always charge for what your, your services yes, are, I think. Yes, absolutely. But, yeah, you, custom pair of shoes. Could you talk about the pre tree again and what it's called and how to find it? Sure. Market? Yep, sure will. So, before we do that, I want to show you this. So, these are our printed, completed shoes. Again, location was good. We knew we were in the right spot. The way to cure this is with a heat gun. So we're gonna have Josh just kind of do a quick yeah. cure of this I'll blast with the heat gun. And now we don't have to totally cure them while they're on here. I just like to hit it a little bit so we right. can get them off and then we'll kind of yeah. finish it up afterwards. So. Yeah, so just to do, he'll do a light one of those. Um, and is my levels okay? Or should we just let him do that? We'll just let him do that and we'll talk about Just it. vacuuming in the background? Yeah. No big deal. No big deal. So again, there's a lot of overspray but you can tuck shirts underneath in your um, your bay here to kind of keep that overspray from kind of um, you know, on your platen tray to kind of keep from building up. Um, that's probably not a bad idea. Um, but we'll take this. I'll just pull them right off. Well, Josh removes one. I'm going to talk about pre-treat. So here's the pre-treat solution. It's available on Shop Melco right now. It's called Universal Pre-treat. Um, it's not terribly expensive, but you buy it in four bottles of one liter each and this is concentrate so um, if you're printing on 100% cotton you're going to reduce it by 50% if you're printing on 100% polyester you might only reduce it by about 10% um, and use 90% polyester but it's it's non-toxic um, it gives you incredible white so this default settings in garment creator with this pre-treat solution have really proven to be plenty white um, so you're going to save a lot of money on your white ink consumption it, it works well on some of those other shirts that really don't work the best for direct -to garment printing this pre-treat solution really is pretty top shelf stuff we're really excited about it what was the question will that pre-treat work for uh, different DTG print asking for yes it? yes yeah, so this is just, this is, I think, um, the term universal really kind of shows it all. This, this, is, this is by far, in my opinion, uh, the leading pre-treat in the industry for sure. We've tried them all. This stuff just kills it. It really is good. And again, it's not toxic. So that's, that's something we really, really like. Easy. So right. let's peel it. Yeah. Take down on this. Fairly simple. Let's and just rip off hands. all of our, yes, clean hands. Clean hands, dry stuff. So again, there's some overspray. But not a big deal. Normally, you would not take the masking off because it's going to take the Correct. Likely, yeah. So that's absolutely right. But we got it 100% dry. Um, you're going to use that. that uh, yep. And then, gun. as I was saying, just quick cleanup on the eyelets. There's still some spray on there, but just take anything you have laying around. Yeah. Wipe it down. You're good to go. Nice, man. Nice and easy. Pizza shoes. Pizza shoes. Did we get any in your size? We did. Good. So you'll so. be walking out of here and be wearing them at trade shows. Yeah. It's <laughs> so. a good idea. Well, we will be showing it at trade shows. So there you go. Quick and easy. How to print on a shoe with your Epson F2100. The value cheesy. in it. A lot of money to be made here. Um, fun for your customers. Fun for you. Enjoy. Thanks for watching Digital Monday. Thanks for being here, Josh. Yeah. Thanks for having me. You bet, buddy. Anytime. Thanks, guys.